When we pass, not if you pass. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. We're about to get rolling here in a minute. Just want to do a quick mic check. Can you guys hear us nice and clear? Woo! Yeah, parties from home happening right now. Yep, 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 yep. Hey, Very good. Perfect. So we've got a mixture of people here from around the country, some on online programs. We're doing this for GK Math and also for Praxis Math. So I know we have some people. Anyone here joining in for Praxis Math? FTC people go ahead and give us a shout out. So you go ahead and type in if you're FTC or Praxis. Praxis, okay. Yeah, Praxis. So we got some Praxis people in here. All right. Nice. And who's been to Open Number Four? Nice. First timer. Got a lot of us here that have that have been here before. All right, so we know the deal here. Dr. A, let's take it away. We're ready to go. All right, I think it's that time. Everyone wants to spend spend a 10 a.m. morning some with us here. Shenanigans, learning some math here today. So let's get rolling. It's probably better 10 a.m. than 7 p.m. most times. <laughs> All right, so we titled us How to Become a GK Math Expert. That should be a slash Praxis Expert because we, we, uh, we invited our Praxis peeps from our other groups. So welcome, welcome, welcome. So... Don't be concerned, we picked the skills that are for both of the exams that our math magician here, Anderson, is gonna take over in a couple of minutes. So real quick, if you haven't been to one of the Learning Liaisons webinars, my name is Dr. A, Jason Ampel. I'm the owner of the Learning Liaisons and I do a lot of the courses on the website as well. I've been teaching for in the classroom for 10 years, a professor over at UCF and the College of Education since 2009. Done a lot of stuff in education, a lot of senior interns, supervised interns, all kinds of trainings. So. I decided to start doing this about five years ago because I saw a big need in a lot of the college students at UCF that having problems passing this exam. So fast forward to today, we've helped over 6,000 teachers pass their various exams. So you're in perfect hands, the best hands there are when it comes to certification prep, especially math here today because we're here with our math magician, Anderson. So Anderson, you're, you're gonna talk about yourself a little bit. You wanna do a quick introduction? Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, so I'm Anderson, the math director here. And uh, yeah, I've been here for the past three years. I'm also a teacher. Um, I've done a lot of things in education as well. I'll get more about that in a minute, okay. but um, you know, I'm really excited to, to get this started and just awesome. answer that quick question. Yeah, I was about to answer um, but you can go. Yeah, so it, yeah, both, all of the questions are gonna be both for practice and GK. It covers, you know, I'm using only topics that cover both tests. Yes. So that's why it's easy for us to bring in everybody. Yeah, so for the people sitting there doing GK and you're thinking, what the heck is this crazy person talking about Praxis? Praxis core exam is kind of like your GK math. So what Anderson did is he picked the skills that are the same exact skills on both tests. And this way we're going to present those here today. So hopefully that answers your question. All right. So before we begin, real quick, number one, I'm recording this. And everyone who signs up uh, will get an email with a link to the recording. But I think we're also we're doing a lot of these webinars over the next couple of weeks because of the situation and the schools closing down. So we thought, let's bring in some people, myself included, doing a bunch of webinars over the next couple of weeks. So this is the first one we're doing. I'm actually doing an essay one later this afternoon. So we're also probably, I'm probably gonna upload all these to our YouTube channel as well. So this way the people who didn't sign up still can benefit and go and watch that stuff. So real quick, before we begin, we got some housekeeping items that we have to talk about, very important, right? So, so we're all on the same page here. Yes, like I just said, I'm gonna email you the recording tomorrow. I'm also gonna upload it on our YouTube channel as well. If you haven't subscribed, definitely go to the Learning Leads on YouTube and subscribe. Subscribe, got a lot especially a lot of math videos. We're gonna be adding some more videos over the next month or so, but there's a ton of math videos with Anderson here. Uh, you will not have the recording forever, but I gotta change that because I am gonna put it on YouTube with this exception the next couple of weeks here. You can ask questions here today. If Anderson's going over a question and you have questions about that question, fire away. However, if it's something off topic, we're not gonna to run off at 11.30. We'll hang out if you guys have any questions. Hold anything off topic until the end. So the plan is an hour and a half. So we're gonna to go to 1130. And I bolded this one because every time I launch one of these webinars, I always get a bunch of people that email me and text me. I'm coming to your math webinar, I'm excited. Can I, I'm ready to go take the test right after, right? And the answer is no, because Anderson can only go over so much in an hour, hour and a half. So how many, what are you gonna go over, like one skill? Yeah, one Two. skill, four questions. One skill, so all these exams have 20 plus skills on them. So this is a great first step and we've got your back. I'm gonna give you the opportunity 
to get everything you need to pass your math test at the end. However, this alone is just a great start, but it's not gonna prepare for the whole exam. Uh, this is for our GK people out there. If you didn't know this, if you're in our, any of our courses, have been to any of our other math webinars, you probably remember this number, hopefully. Only 39% of teachers pass all four subtests on the GK on the first attempt. All right, Braxis people, your passing percentage is a little bit higher than that. I don't have the exact number, uh, but it's not very high. So we gotta make sure we do things the right way. We are not study guide company. We don't sell you study guides. We're not gonna sell you, we're gonna send you study, study guides. Study guides, honestly, in our experience, are the major contributor to the high failure rate. Why? Because people out there just memorizing questions, memorizing formulas, just taking notes on random stuff. It's not about doing the same problem over and over, over again. It's about understanding the concept and how to do it in multiple ways. And Anderson's gonna help you with that, all right? Uh, this one, I've got it on here, so I guess I gotta abide by it. If you guys hang out to the end, I'm gonna pay for one lucky person's test. All right, I usually do that in the webinars. So you gotta be in it to win it at the end. And next and last but not least, make sure you have your phone ready, right? There's gonna be some things that Anderson's gonna put on the screen. You might wanna take a picture. Or we might some put some links or websites at the end. You might wanna take a picture. So just make sure you have your phone ready and ready to go. All right, so are you ready? What do you guys think? Are you ready? <laughs> yes. Um, Amarella says the sound is breaking. You might, might want to close the classroom and come right back in. That usually fix that problem. All right. So once again, questions about what's on the screen, shoot away. If it's different, off topic, hold it till the end. And also you'll see a little Q&A box on the bottom of the screen too. You could definitely use that so you don't forget questions. You can type it in that Q&A box. All right. So why are we really here? Right, it's very simple. You're here for one or maybe more than one of these questions. You're here because you spent a lot of money or more money than you have on retakes for taking this, this test. You just want to pass and be over it. You are a college student and you need to pass this exam to get into your college of education. Or you're a classroom teacher. Right? You're a classroom teacher and you need to pass this test in order to keep your job. Or you're here because you failed it before. You just want to get over with. Give me what I need to do to pass so I don't have to do math anymore. All right, so I know everyone here wants to pass their general knowledge test or praxis exam. I'm gonna add that to you, all right? And yet you're dealing with all these exams, the ridiculous exams by the state that are not indicative of your teaching skills. So if any of you guys have been to any of our live sessions before on the webinars, you know that we like to have a good time and laugh and have fun, but also serious too and very transparent. This is one of those transparent times here. Yes, these tests are ridiculous. Yes, if you're not a math teacher, why the heck do you have to know this? Well, there are some certain skills here that Anderson would, would argue that are very important for us to know on a daily basis to help our kids. But we also know that there's some high level math stuff on there that you just have to understand and have appreciation for it so we can get through this exam. And that's what we're here for. This test, your test makes teachers feel depressed, anxious, and questioning their careers. We do this every day, seven days a week. We get the phone calls, we get the emails, but don't worry, you're in perfect hands. We've got your back. And obviously it's wrong when teachers feel that way. So like I mentioned before, we've helped over 6,000 teachers pass their various certification exams, not because we're the almighty and know the answers to the test, because no one knows the answers to the test. What makes us better than everybody else is that we're gonna support you. You're gonna be able to ask questions to Anderson here, any of the courses that you have from us, you can call, you can email, we're not a book that you buy online and Amazon and that's it, hands off, good luck. We're here for you to hold your hand until you pass the test. Because we've understand the pain because we've been there ourselves. We've been through these exams. We're educators just like you, all right? So here's what we need to do about it. Very simple. You need to follow along today, ask questions, soak it all in. Don't worry about writing a million, million miles an hour, taking notes, you're gonna get this recording. Just relax, you're gonna do some math problems here with Anderson but just model what we practice, what Anderson practiced here today. And there's a reason why you need to do it, right? Because if you don't, you either won't be able to keep your job if you're a classroom teacher or get into your college of education if you're a college student. And we don't want that to happen because we want a good thing to happen. So real simple question before we get rolling. If you want a good thing to happen, can I get you to type a capital yep in the chat box? Go ahead and put that in the chat box if you want a good thing to happen. All right, there we go, good. I like to see them type that real fast. All right, so who's ready to start clearing up the confusion on your math subtest of your GK or Praxis? 
Go ahead, make fun of me. I already am internally. <laughs> All right, so without further ado, we are going to turn it over to our math director here, Anderson, and he's going to switch it to his iPad because I'm too slow with doing that. <laughs> Just want to make sure that we can keep recording a little bit more. Everything's good. Let's go. All right, everybody, we should see the screen pop up in just about three seconds here. So go ahead and let me know once you see it. But we're going to go ahead and begin now, guys. Calculator, though. I am Anderson. <laughs> I am the math magician here at the Learning Liaisons. That's the unofficial title. Uh, but I'm actually the director of mathematics, uh, director of learning and development here. And I'm proud of it. You know, uh, part of my job is to help people succeed. And that's honestly all I do. You know, whether it's here with you guys and, or elsewhere. I just love helping people out. So with that said, you know, I know this time right now isn't the easiest. And so we wanted to host this webinar to show you guys that we can still come together as a community and still get things done. All right. So with that said, um, just with a little bit about me, you know, I, I have a master's in education, uh, specifically math education, and I've been up and down the education uh, spectrum for the past uh, decade. You know, I've prepared courses and, and authored and contributed to SAT resources, GRE resources, FTCE, Praxis, AP Calculus. Um, and it, it's, it's been just outstanding every single time. You know, it really has. So uh, with that said, you know, I wanna welcome you guys to this session. We're gonna do a lot of math today and we're gonna keep it short and simple, guys. It really, it's a three-step three plan for every math problem, every single time, all right? And in this three-step plan, this is what's gonna help you really get every single problem that you do, whether you get it right or wrong. So how often do we get a math problem right, but then go back and we can't exactly talk about what we did. We can't exactly explain what we did confidently. And when that happens, that means that you don't truly understand what you're doing because maybe you've gotten lucky or maybe you memorized something and you used it the right way. But the thing is, it's not about getting one problem right. It's about getting the next problem right. So with that said, this is a three-step plan for every math problem that we're going to implement starting now, moving forward forever. All right. So first step in every math problem, we want to look at the context of the problem. All right. We want to look at the context of the problem. And I call this step the destination step. So before you pick up your calculator, before you freak out over a word problem, before we go crazy, let's go ahead and just think about the context. And what I mean by that is, hey, what is going on? What do we see? What can I easily recognize? What's the conversation about? Just basically familiarize yourself with the conversation. That's all we're doing. Because once we know what the conversation's about, once we understand the situation, then we can make a plan to solve that problem. But you can't make a plan if you don't understand what's going on. So do you see the flow here? Too many people, they see a key word and they try to pick up their calculator and apply some formula and hope for the best, but you don't truly know if you're right. The first thing everybody should do is just take a moment, 10, 15 seconds, read the problem, identify what you recognize and say, hey, what's the, you know, what am I trying to figure out? Then we're gonna make a plan because this is where the content comes in. So first things first is the context, then the content. And so once we you know, figure out a plan, what involves, what's involved there is, hey, what given information do I have? What information am I trying to figure out? How can I connect the two with math? And then once you connect it, boom, you can then follow your plan. And this is where you compute. So again, the plan is to start off with the context, then go into the content, and then compute. So with that said, we're gonna go ahead and get started. Today's theme is how to tackle really any type of problem. But the thing is, you're gonna see a lot of systems of equations work problems here today. And so I gave you that one little hint. If you didn't hear me, go ahead, that's fine. I'm not gonna repeat it because I want us to have a really nice, pleasant, live look at this. But we're gonna use that plan, destination, plan, follow, and get this thing done. So give me a yes in the chat box if you're ready to go. What's going, what's going to Facebook? No, I'm looking at my computer. You are sometimes pausing and stuff, and I'm watching you on there. 
All right, let me go to the first problem. We'll talk about it. All right, guys, just one more time. I know the internet's a little uh, lackey right now. It looks like the world's ending pretty much, but we're gonna go ahead and get started with our first problem. I'm gonna present the problem, and I'm gonna go ahead and give us two minutes and 50 seconds. 50, not 15, two minutes and 50 seconds for this first one. I wanna see where we are. So let me go ahead and get my stopwatch out. All right, first problem, here we go. I'm gonna give us two minutes and 50 seconds. Do not share your answer, all right? Do not share your answer. We are all going to do it together. So two minutes and 50 seconds. Don't share your answer. All right, folks. So try that out. I will be right back while you guys work this out. Remember, destination, what's going on first, then make a plan, and then follow it. I'll be right back. All right, I ended up cutting the video to see if this would help out in terms of being able to hear my voice more easily because we do understand that everybody in the world is using their internet, so that might be slowing us down. So let me know if you can hear me a little better now. And also, if you're ready to go, type ready in the chat box. Perfect. A lot of us are ready and looks like we have just about 20 more seconds to go. So remember, keep trying, keep trying. If you have to be ready to take a guess, go ahead and do that. That is fine. 10 seconds to go. Three, two, one. All right, everybody, what's our answer? Let's go ahead and bring it out now. All right, all right. Oh, looks like a lot of us agree on A. Looks like a lot of us agree on A. Okay. Okay. I hope we're right. <laughs> I hope we are right. All right. Yeah, a lot of us picked A. A lot of us did pick A. So I don't want to reveal the answer quite yet because I want to make sure that we are relying on our ability to explain ourselves and build our confidence as opposed to just simply seeing that we're right and moving on. So with that said, we're gonna go to that plan, destination, plan, follow. And I'm gonna show you how powerful this is. So destination, plan, follow. We're gonna apply this thing and really hone in. So with destination, what we wanna start off with is the context, the story. That way you don't feel overwhelmed about the problem. So here we go. A medium pizza at Polini's costs $7.30 with an additional 65 cents per topping. So we're talking about pizza at Polini's. A medium pizza at Lorenzo, okay, so we're talking about pizza at Lorenzo's now, costs that much with an additional 90 cents per topping. At what number of toppings do the pizzas cost the same at Polini's and Lorenzo's? 
So what I did first was I only highlighted the context, the information that I needed to understand the situation and what I needed to solve for. So ignore the numbers, guys. It's not about what the numbers are, it's about what they represent. So we're talking about, and just using the green and highlight, hey, we're talking about the cost of pizza at Polini's, the cost of pizza at Lorenzo's, and the cost is based off of the pizza and the toppings. And we just wanna know how many toppings do we need for the cost to be the same? So boom, there's my, there's my situation, there's my context. We should be able to imagine it. We've all been to a pizza place hopefully once in our lives. I think we can imagine it. And the goal again is to say how many toppings would make the prices the same. So we're looking for T toppings. Is it okay if I say T toppings guys? All right, perfect. So yeah, let's go ahead and use T toppings here. I don't know how many toppings that is, so I'm just gonna say T, that's what I'm looking for. Now let's go ahead and make a plan. So in my plan, what you wanna do is you wanna review the given information to see how you can connect what you have to what you don't have. And that's where you really need to blend that context and math skill. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use purple here and I'm gonna highlight as well in purple the numbers now and I'm gonna outline what it all means. So everybody, what's the first number that I should write down? Go ahead, let's get involved. So 730, all right. Now 730, all right, cool. And it's not about what the number is, it's about what it represents. So what does $7.30 represent? And is there any information that's connected directly to that $7.30? Right, the cost of pizza, and I love how you say Pellini's now, sweet. So we're saying Pellini's price of pizza, and then someone else earlier said, hey, 65 cents should also be included. Now, how do we know that $7.30 and 65 cents are connected? Well, they are both under Pellini's. They are both under Pellini's. And so if I think about it, if I write Pellini's, well, the cost of pizza, we got 730 plus 65 cents per topping. And obviously when we're taking the test, we don't wanna go, you know, you don't really don't want to write everything out. I'm really just trying to illustrate this, especially since you can't see my hands right now. But now up next, if I'm taking a look over here, I see that Lorenzo's kind of has a similar vibe. We have Lorenzo over here and the cost for a pizza at Lorenzo's is $6.80 with an additional 90 cents per topping. So at Lowe's, again, we have $6.80 plus 90 cents per topping. All right, so guys, here's what I'm looking at. I'm looking at this information and I'm saying, well, the cost of Pell's pizza is $7.30 plus 65 cents per topping. For Lowe's, the cost is $6.80 plus 90 cents per topping. Guys, what kind of a problem do you think this is based off of what you see written now for Polini's and Lorenzo's? Like, what kind of math do you notice here? We see addition, yeah, so in, on a standard sense, yeah, for sure, we do see some operations that we recognize that are the same. We see some algebra, okay, we're getting hotter now. Now, when I take a look at these equations, when you have, think about it like this, guys. You have two equations, both representing the same thing, using the same variables. What is that called? Because this is going to set us up for everything else in this webinar. If anybody can get this math topic, let us know. Val, I love that technique. I'm gonna show you that technique actually in a moment. So it looks like we are not entirely there in terms of understanding what topic this is and in terms of recognizing it. And this is how we can tell we can improve our mathematical skill. Because again, we know how to interpret the problem. It's the plan that confuses us just a little bit. And guys, our plan is that this is a system of equations.
this is a system of equations. So with a system of equations, here's how you can tell you have one. When you have two equations representing the same two variables. I know someone said ratio earlier and that's and proportions and that's probably because when I teach proportions, I tell you, hey, are you comparing the same items in the same way? And that's actually happening not here though. We're not comparing the same pizzas at Polini's or Lorenzo's. We are looking at an equation for Polini's and an equation for Lorenzo's, but they both use the same variables. That's the difference. So again, in a proportion, you're comparing the same scenario in the same ways. Here, we're comparing two things with the same variables. I know it seems confusing, but I'm gonna show you more and more problems like this to show you the difference between proportions and systems. But here we are. This is a system of equations. Remember, we're looking for the number of toppings where the medium pizzas cost the same. So guys, if I were to go ahead and use C for cost, and remember, I use T for toppings. If I'm using T for toppings, then would I write 65T? Is that okay with you guys? Is that correct? For Polini's pizza. Right, it absolutely is. And so think about it. If we're looking for where the cost is the same with the same amount of toppings, can I reuse the C and reuse the T to represent Lorenzo's now? Is that possible? Should I do that? Right, we absolutely should. And it's because again, the cost at Pell's and Lowe's is gonna be the exact same. So we want to use those same variables. We want to use those same variables. That is what we have to do. Because again, the toppings are the same. And so is the cost. Again, the problem gives it away the cost to be the same. So this is how we know we're good. So with that said, what we wanna do now is we want to go ahead and use this to solve. So with that said, how can we solve a system of equations? Who remembers how we can solve a system? And go ahead and share. And if you say, if you have no clue at all, go ahead, type in the chat box. Let me know, because I wanna make something good happen here today. So I want to know who knows, who thinks they know. Thanks for being honest, guys. Hey, look, this is what it's all about. This is why we're here. So think about it like this, folks. We want to think about it in terms of the context. You want to always talk in English here. So remember, the cost is going to be the same at Polini's and Lorenzo's. So if the cost for a certain pizza at Polini's is this, and the cost for that uh, for a pizza at Lorenzo's, which is the same at Polini's, is this. Does that not mean that these blue highlights should represent the same amount? Is that not true? Because if cost equals 730 plus all that, and cost also equals 680 plus all that, does that not mean that those are the same? It does. It definitely does. It's like saying, hey, five equals four plus one and five equals three plus two. Does this mean that four plus one equals three plus two? Yes, it does. It absolutely does. So that's the logic that I'm using. If the cost equals that and cost also equals this, then those two representations equal each other. That's what I'm trying to show us. Does everybody understand that? Because we're going to get a little technical now. Oh, well, that was the technical part. Now we're just going to solve. But who's ready to, to see this play out? Because I'm going to explain this another way as well, in a logical way, without all the technicality. So let's go ahead and try this out here. 
we're going to set these bad boys equal to each other. Let me go ahead and actually duplicate this screen. That way I can actually let me just add a page here so I can type in below. So I have my, my uh, costs and I'm going to set them equal to each other. 730 plus 65T equals 680 plus 0 0.9T. And remember everybody, we're solving for the number of toppings. So keep that in mind. So if I solve this equation and I get T by itself, did I win? Did I finish? Yep. No, the answer is actually, yeah. Because once I get T by itself, I'm done. Because remember, T represents the number of toppings. And so if I can figure out what T is in this case, then we're good. Because remember, this represents cost at Polini's, cost at Lowe's, and we're looking for where the T are the same in both. Boom. Right, cool. So no worries. Let's go ahead and try it out now. So just wanted to make sure that you guys saw that. All right, so here we are. Taking all these highlights out, let's get to it. So the first thing I'm gonna to do to both sides is I'm gonna to try to get these T's by themselves. So what I will do here is I'm gonna subtract the 680 from both sides. The reason I'm doing that is because I don't want it on the right side and I can keep the number positive on the left. So everybody help me out. What's $7.30 subtracted $6.80? Right, it's gonna give us 50 cents, cool. So we have 50 cents plus 65 cents times T equals 0 0.90 T. And what I'm gonna do now is again, we wanna get the variables on the same side. So I'm gonna move the 0 0.65 T to the right by subtracting it on both sides. Remember the key to equation solving is to go ahead and work backwards. So move things together and then work backwards. So from there, what should I have on the right side? Cause this is gonna eliminate what should I have on the right side? 0 0.25 what though? Right, 0 0.25 T. So the last thing I'm gonna do is just, you can think about it logically or you can just go ahead and solve. Think about it like this. If I have 50 cents and that 50 cents is 25 cents times something, what is that something what does it gotta be? How many times 25 cents is 50 cents? What is T? Right, T's gotta be two. T has to be two and we can just divide it on both sides if we wanted to see it that way too. But yeah, you can do it that way and you can receive T equals two. Two what though? What is two again? Two toppings. Notice why he's T now? Do you see why T is, you know, using a letter that represents what you're solving for is so important. It makes it so much easier to reflect on the problem and say, oh yeah, T was toppings. So two toppings is the answer. So who did it this way when they solved? Because I'm, I'm about to show you uh, uh, another way that can probably make it easier for us if we recognize this. Ah, a lot of us didn't. Ah, but did we at least understand parts of this method that we may want to use moving forward? Because these values were actually close enough for us to do it without a system. But the thing is, we can't predict what type of problem we'll see, whether the values are really close together or they're really crazy. All right, so it looks like half and half, but it's a lot better than when we started. So let's go ahead and let's go ahead and try this problem again in a different way now. So get ready to, you know, I'm gonna erase this, but no worries, you guys are getting the recording. So don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. If you feel like you have to write everything down, you don't have to. So allow me to go ahead and just rope all of this information. Delete everything. And I'm gonna show you how to do this in a more logical way, a more kind of relaxed way. So I'm gonna take a look at the information again and watch this. We know that we're looking for the number of toppings that'll make them the same price. We know that, we know that. And so we can make a little table and we can essentially see, hey, let's mess around with some numbers and we'll see where they're the same. 
We can do that because the numbers are fairly close together. So watch. I'm going to talk about Pels. I'm going to talk about Lorenzo's. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and compare them depending on how many toppings. So depending on how many toppings, we're going to compare them. So everybody, if I have zero toppings with Pellinis, we're going to have $7.30. And Lorenzo's, we're going to have $6.80. That's going to be fine. Now, what's the difference between $7.30 and $6.80? Well, there's a difference of 50 cents. So that means that there's no, they're not the same. They are not the same. We're not good to go. It's not going to be zero. Well, here's what happens. Because you're looking at 65 cents a topping at Pellinis, and 90 cents a topping at Lorenzo's. What's the difference in the cost of, of the toppings, guys? What's the difference in price per topping? Right, 25 cents. So every topping that you add, Lorenzo's would cost 25 more cents. Now think about it. Think about this, and this is like a, like a nice little logical way to think about it. The difference in price between their base pizzas is 50 cents. And if you're telling me that Lorenzo's toppings, are 25 cents per topping, so if it's 25 cents more than Pellini's, well then how many more toppings do you need to catch up, uh, to catch up 50 cents? Yeah. If Lorenzo's, again, yeah, they cost 25 more cents per topping. And if we only have to catch up by 50 cents, that's two toppings, guys. That is two toppings. And so what you can do is just go ahead and say, you know, try it out, two toppings. Well, that's going to be 750 plus the two times 65 cents here. And you can do the, seven, the 680 plus two times 90 cents here. And then you'll see very clearly that that is going to be the answer because two times 65, two times 65 cents, that's a dollar 30 cents, giving us $8 and 60 cents. Here, this is a dollar 80. And if we add that to 680, we get 860. So this is just another way to do the problem. You see that we're looking for toppings and we still see that the answer is two. The last way that a lot of people uh, did it as well was they said, Hey, look, my answer is either two, three, five, and six. Because I don't know how to do this directly, because I'm a little uh, you know, anxious right now about the problem, I'm just gonna plug and chug. And I see that the answer choices represent what? They represent toppings. So I'm going to apply two toppings, three toppings, five toppings, and six toppings, and I'm gonna see where Pellini's and Lorenzo's have the same price. And you guys instantly found that two is the answer after plugging in. Is that your method? Because I know a lot of us did that. Yep, that's right, Anissa and Soraya. Yep, that's it. And so again, do you see how it's beautiful though? There's so many different ways that we can do problems like this. And that's really just me telling you and really trying to show you that it's not always going to require a technical super like memorized solution. Sometimes you can use your logic and say, hey, I see those answer choices and I know I can plug them in. I know the situation. Let's get to work. And I'm proud of you guys for that. I'm proud of you guys for trying that out and, and understanding different ways as well. So even if you didn't get it right, how do we feel about this problem now? Now that we've gone over it in so many different ways, how do we feel about a problem like this? Nice. Now, who thinks that it would probably be a good idea to know how to solve a system of equations? <laughs> Yeah, it probably would. It probably would. Right, Anthony? Yeah. And I know it's overwhelming, Josephina. I know it is. But the thing is, at the end of the day, once you've learned it, you got it. It's kind of like any skill that you learn in life. Like once you truly understand it, that's it. You're good. So we just have to put in that work in the beginning and then just maintain it afterward. So it's not terrible. I know it seems bad at the beginning, but afterwards it's not terrible. But remember, guys, it's all about destination plan follow. Your first step is identifying that context. 
keep it casual. Keep it casual. It's going to help us curb that anxiety because there's nothing worse than starting a problem and then your fear takes over and you freak out. So this is allowing you to establish a discipline so you can go step by step as opposed to, oh, I'm going to grab my calculator and let me hope for the best, <laughs> you know? And even if you plugged and chug, it's better to say, all right, oh, we're looking for the number of toppings. Let's go ahead and use the answer choices to plug it back in. Boom, you have a plan, then use your calculator to plug and chug. So even if you did, you know, use the answer choices, you had a plan. So I want you to appreciate that. So destination, plan, and follow. Take a picture of this if you did not do so already. Actually, take a picture of this one here if you did not do it already. I'm gonna to count to 10 seconds. Yes, and you can use a calculator on the GK. But go ahead, grab your, uh, grab your phone, take a picture of this three-step process. This is how we're gonna get it done. Three, two, one. All right, let's go ahead and move forward. Let's do the next problem. All right, so I'm gonna time us again, two minutes and 50 seconds. Let me grab my timer here. All right, everybody, starting three, two, one, go. Example problem number two. So we might notice that plugging and chugging may not work directly here. So let's see if we can calmly go through the problem, assess what's going on, and see if we can make a mathematical plan. Hi, Aguana. So it depends on which SAE we're talking about. If it's the SAE, uh, PK-3, uh, no, if it's uh, the high school math, yes. Um, for all the other tests, just to make sure that I'm not misspeaking, you want to go on the state website for each test, and they'll let you know whether or not you get a calculator and a reference sheet. All right, folks, we're looking at our final 10. And again, if we haven't quite solved it yet, we want to understand where we are. Take a guess in three, two, one, go. Let's see, what do we got? What do we got? What are our answers, guys? <laughs> it's okay if we have to guess. It's okay. Let, let us know if it is a guess, if you did guess. 
hey, no worries, Angela. Thanks for being honest. No worries, Sammy. I got your back too. I got your back. Remember, guys, it's about being honest about what we can and cannot do. This is what we need to know as educators. We need to really understand where our students are and where they're not, because it's our job to build the bridge and get them there. And so as learners, we want to apply that same teaching principle. We need to try our best every time to understand what we understand and to identify what we don't. So this is why destination plan follow is the plan for eternity. Seriously, destination plan and follow. What's my context? So when you read a problem, here's how we do it. We always want to read the problem for the context first. Don't worry about the numbers. So here we are. We're talking about Melody and she owns a shoe store. Can you imagine that? Absolutely. So keep that in your head. She owns a shoe store. We're talking about last week and how much she sold and compared to this week. Okay, so I'm reading this and my first two sentences tell me we're talking about Melody, Melody who owns a shoe store and then we're talking about, hey, how many shoes she sold last week versus this week. And then the next sentence tells us how many she sold over the two weeks. All right, there's my situation. We're talking about Melody who owns a shoe store and then she's comparing how much she sold last week to this week. And then she's also talking about how much she sold total. And then I also see the question says, how many more boots did she sell last week than this week? Oh, so with that said, I got my destination there. My context again, Melody owning a shoe store. She sold shoes last week and this week. And we want to know how many she sold last week versus this week. So how many more? So ladies and gentlemen, let me ask a very simple question. If you were there and you knew how many she sold last week and how many she sold this week, what are you doing with those two numbers? All right, so the majority of us agree that we are subtracting. We are subtracting actually here. And here's why folks. So it says, how many more boots did she sell last week than this week? So think about a, a different situation because whenever I read a question and I don't quite understand it in terms of like context and what I'm supposed to do, I always think about it like this. I always say, okay, let me switch the scenario. Instead of boots and selling, what if I said, how many more Jolly Ranchers does Tim have than Chris? And if I think about it that way, a situation that I'm well aware of that I've been there before in terms of teaching, I know I'm subtracting. So I'll say it again. If I switch the scenario and say, how many more Jolly Ranchers does Chris have than Timmy? I'm saying, hey, what's the difference between them two? So that's what we're doing here. We're asking about the difference between how many she sold last week versus this week. So that's gonna be my answer. So here we go. My answer is boots last week. minus this week. All right, and so that's again, boots for last week and boots for this week. So far, does this make sense? Just what I talked about so far, not the rest of the problem, just so far. We are just trying to find boots last week minus boots this week. This is how awesome destination plan follow is. You don't freak out when all you're doing is asking simple questions. Now, to solve this question, so now we're going into a plan here. So to solve this question, what do we need to figure out then? And that's a rhetorical question. We need to figure out how many boots she sold last week, and we need to find out how many boots she sold this week. That's really it. That was a rhetorical question. That's how simple this is. So now we need to go ahead and figure this out. Boots last week and boots this week. Let's figure that out. I'm gonna highlight the important information here. Let's go ahead and erase now. All right, so let's, let's find those numbers. All right, so I see here, last week, she sold six more than three times the number of boots. This week, 
Okay, let's go ahead and turn that into a little equation, everybody, because it's all about translating the English into math. This is what we're doing now. So last week, so last week, uh, I'll use L for last week and uh, T for this week. Is that okay with everybody? Nope, don't use X now. You don't wanna use X, you don't wanna use Y because you're gonna go ahead and finish the problem, get like Y equals five point, or you know, you get your answer, but you were so ingrained in the problem that you forgot what Y was, you forgot what X was, you know? <laughs> and it's crazy because it happens so often. No, no, don't apologize. It happens so often. And so I just wanna help us out here in terms of doing the little things right to make sure that we understand the problems. So I'll use L for last week and T for this week. So to do this now, last week, so L, she sold. So since L means the booth sold last week, selling them, well, that's the same thing as saying equals. So last week she sold and then six more than three times the number of boots this week. So last week equals six more than three times this week. So notice how I wrote this in English because this is how I usually write it in my head. But now I'm gonna turn this into math completely. Last week equals six more than, so that means whatever we're doing, add six, and then three times this week. So three times T. Did what I just did make sense? I translated that first or that second sentence into math. Got a couple people raising their hand, nice. How are we feeling? Give me a yes, give me a no, give me a oh my God. <laughs> All right, perfect. I wanna take you guys from start to finish. <laughs> so again, the goal of the problem is to figure out the difference between last week and this week. So our sub goals now is to figure out what last week and this week are. I'm just translating what I see in the problem to see if I can find some more clues. And so now I see that, oh, last week is 3t plus 6. Keep that thought there. Because let me ask everybody here. Can you solve an equation that has two variables in it? Can you solve for it? Because again, I'm trying to solve for L and T, but can I solve for the actual number? Yeah, no, we actually can't guys. Yeah, we actually can't solve for them because we have two variables in one equation. So there's no way we'd be able to solve for them. We're gonna have to go ahead and actually make another equation. So let me use a different color here to show you what we're gonna do now. Watch this. Melody sold a total of 110 books over those two weeks. So last week and this week is a total of 110. Everybody, can we translate that into math? So it's total of 110. Can we turn that into math? What is that gonna look like? First week plus the second week equals the total. 110 equals L plus T. Yeah, it has to equal 110. Exactly, guys, exactly. This means that last week plus this week equals 110. And if I translate it completely, that's L plus T equals 110. Did we see how I translated that English into math? That's what I want y'all to do. Did we see how that worked out? Because now we're gonna use this information to really get things going in the easiest way possible. Good. So let's go ahead now. I'm gonna, again, if you wanna watch the recording and, and see that again, please do. But what I'm gonna do now is focus on what I've got. I have these two equations that I'm gonna use. And you know how I'm gonna use them, guys? Look at this. If last week equals all of this, let me erase all of this because it's a distraction now. So if last week equals all of this, and we have L right here as well, 
Remember, these are the same L's. They mean the same thing. So if this L equals 3t plus 6, does this L also equal 3t plus 6? Yeah, it does. It definitely does. And guys, there's a name for this. There's a name for this. This is called substitution. This is called substitution. And what's going to happen here is I'm going to take this equation, the second one, and I am simply going to rewrite it with that substitution, with that replacement. So instead of writing L, I'm going to write what it equals. 3t plus 6. And I'm going to bring my t down equals 110. We can solve for t now because we only have one t or one variable in a whole equation. So let's go ahead and do that. So 3t plus 6 plus t equals 110. This simplifies to 4t plus 6 equals 110. Well, what do I do next, everybody? Help me out. Let's go and work together here. What do I do next? Right. We'll take away that 6 from both sides. Amazing. Give me 4t equals 104. And then divide 4 on both sides. And we get t equals 26. What does t represent again? What does t represent again? Because again, we always want to dip our hands back into an understanding of that context. Yeah, exactly. T for this week, not total. T is this week. Remember, that's what we said over here. Boots last week, boots this week. That's why it's so important to have that plan in place. That's why it's so important, everybody. So we have T equals 26. And so what that means is, so let me erase all of this. That means that this week is 26. We're subtracting. And now we just want to know what this week or last week was. Oh, and Soraya, I got 4t. Remember, when we add 3t and t together, that's how we get the 4t. Because we have three of something, one of something, bring it together, you have four of something. Hope that helps. So now what we're going to do here is, well, we have t equals 26. How can we get... L, how can we get last week? What do we do? Exactly. I love it. We're going to plug it back in. And Momor said, hey, look, if our total was 110, subtract 26 to get last week. Easy. That makes total sense. That makes total logical sense. You could also plug it right back into the equation. Same deal. L plus T equals 110. We, sub, uh, we replace it with 26. And all we have to do is subtract 26 from 110 to get last week, which is going to be what again? Exactly. 84. So last week is 84. Guys, we're good to go now. We're good to go. This is amazing. Last week is 84. This week was 26. We told ourselves from the very beginning, we said, we're going to take the boots last week, subtract the boots this week, and we're good. We did our work in terms of the math to figure out what last week and this week were. So 84 minus 26, or last week minus this week, equals what, folks? Fifty-eight, exactly. So 58 uh, uh, boots. So what this means is that Melody sold 58 more boots last week than she did this week. And that is answer choice B, 58. So let me go ahead and pause for a moment to talk about even if you got it wrong and even if you're confused, how destination plan follow will still help you grow. Watch this. Remember, destination is a plan, or destination is about the context. The story, okay? So if you, if you had trouble understanding 
what the story was about, then that's destination. If you're having trouble recognizing the content, so building these equations that we just did, building these equations, if you're having trouble with that, then that's content. That's the planning part. That's where you got confused. And so maybe you just need to practice systems of equations as a whole, not word problems, but systems. And then lastly, following, this is where you compute. So did you just, you know, did you get the interpretation right? Did you get the plan right? But maybe you just used the calculator the wrong way. Maybe you just messed up and, and, and you know, did it incorrectly. Well, that's the following. That's your execution. And so this is why destination plan follow is so great because even if you got it wrong, you can identify where you went wrong and then you can move forward with the right plan to grow. So who feels even slightly better than they did before coming into this session? Again, we're focusing solely on systems of equations here. So the next two problems that we're gonna see are exactly that. Perfect, we're feeling a little better now. That's awesome, guys. All right, so who's ready for the next question? Hey, no worries. I hear that all the time, Sammy. <laughs> math is under my best subject. It's all good. It is all good. Depending on what math you put me in, it's not my best subject either. I mean, if you put me in anything below, you know, like calculus three, number theory, logic and proof, like that's my stuff. But when you go into like super duper ridiculous math, like math where triangles don't add up to 180 degrees, like hyperbolic geometry, woo, that stuff was amazing, but it was tough. So what are, really what I'm trying to say is it's all about experience. You know, don't feel bad about not being good at math because it's a skill that you develop. All right, guys, sounds good. Let's go ahead and review it again. Remember, it's about, it's about destination plan, follow, context, content, compute. Why are obtuse angles so depressed? Because they're never right. <laughs> LOL. So let's go ahead and get to that next question. Five, four, three, two, one, go. Two minutes and 30 seconds again. Let's get it done. Remember, go through the story, then make a, a soft plan. You know, just talk about the plan. Then write the plan out in math and then execute. Try it out, try it out, try it out. As bad as you think you are, don't worry. Just try. Starting the timer now. Talk soon. Remember, don't reveal your answers. Don't reveal. Just type when you're ready.
Oh, look at that. I got a couple people ready. You still got 20 seconds. Hey, you're learning. Hey, Fran, I'm happy that you're here too. I know that times are tough right now and this is what it's all about. Coming together, we're still making the progress that we need to make, you know, getting ready for life to get back on track because we know that it will. So we have 10 seconds here. Get ready to take a guess if you don't have an answer yet. Five, four, three, two, and one. What do we got? We D, A, C, B, D. Wow, we are colorful right now. Okay, <laughs> sounds good. Let's keep it going. Let's see what the answers are. C, B, A. Okay. No idea. Thanks for being honest. Oriana Concepcion. I have a couple of friends with that last name. And they're awesome too. All of the above. That is wrong. <laughs> All right. So let's go ahead and go over the result here. You know how I do things. You know I don't like to reveal the answer. Because the, the moment that I reveal the answer, everybody that got it right is just going to tune out. And I'm not trying to do that. I want to make sure that everybody knows why it's right before I tell you what the answer is. So with that said, let's get to it. Destination, plan, follow, as always, my party people, every time. D-P-F. So here we go. Destination. I'm going to highlight the context in purple. So the length of a rectangle is equal to all that. The perimeter of the rectangle is that. What's the length of the rectangle? Again, notice how I didn't read the actual math. So I see here that the length of a rectangle is all that. The perimeter of the rectangle is all that. What's the length? So that's my question right there. What's its length? So there's my context. There's destination. So if I'm, so now I'm going to outline it a little more. I'm going to show you what's going on in my head right now. So with destination, here's what I took away. I'm talking about a rectangle. We have the length in terms of its width. We have its perimeter. And what we want to find out, well, what is the length? So do you see how destination works that way? All you're doing is literally identifying what you see, what you recognize, and you're just identifying the question. So with that said, if I'm imagining this in my head, I can draw a rectangle. No, not a pentagon. I can draw a rectangle. Technology sucks sometimes. There you go. So I'm drawing a rectangle, and I know that my rectangles, they have a length and they have a width. And really what I'm trying to find is that length. So now let's go ahead and get into the plan here. Let's go ahead and dive right into the plan. So with your plan, what you want to do here is always, hey, what do I have? And how can I use that to get to what I need? So first off, we need L. What is the length? And no worries, Josephina, I'll go ahead and try to check on that in one moment, okay? So here we're trying to make a plan. And to make this plan, we're trying to find that length. We're talking about a rectangle. So what is it that we have? So let's go ahead and check out the given information again. We have the rectangle, and we see that the length of the rectangle is equal to three times the width. Can we turn that into an equation, guys? <laughs> oh, look at Anna. She was already ready to go. Perfect. Yep. The length of the rectangle is equal to three times the width. So I'm taking this right here and this says length equals three times the width. All right, if I'm using L for length and W for width, I can literally turn this into L equals three W. Is everybody good right there? Can anybody, can everybody see that part, that first sentence? Awesome. Now let's take a look at the second sentence. It says the perimeter of the rectangle is 88 centimeters. So perimeter is, is turns into equals 88 centimeters. Look at that. We have perimeter equals 88 centimeters. 
And I'm going to use P for perimeter, or I can just leave it as perimeter. It doesn't matter. Now, here's the thing, everybody. We're trying to find L. We see that we have L and W in the same equation, so we can't use that one equation by itself. We need more information. So is there a way for us to write L in this equation? Is there a way for L to appear in perimeter? What is perimeter again, everybody? What's perimeter again? Help me out. Remind me. I'm a little lost right now. So what do, how do I find perimeter? Momors add all sides. All sides added. All sides added. Yeah, it's exactly it. We are not multiplying, Liz. We're not multiplying because that is area, actually. So I'm glad that you're, you're participating because it's going to help us really edit and revise those misconceptions. So we're looking at the distance around, all right, Liz? Not multiplying, that's area. Distance around is perimeter. Remember like in movies, secure the perimeter. Yeah, so we're looking at the distance around. And if we're looking at all the sides, what is the perimeter actually equal to? In terms of, oh yeah, we know it's 88, but in terms of what we see in the rectangle. So in terms of this, what is the perimeter? Exactly, length plus length plus width plus width. We're adding it all the way around. We have two of the L's that we're going through and two of the W's that we're going through. So that means that we have two lengths plus two widths. That's the perimeter. <laughs> You're good, Liz. And so what we have is the perimeter equals two L plus two W. The perimeter also equals 88. So is it safe to say that, boom, erase all this, 2L plus 2W equals 88. Is it safe to say that? I love it. I love it. I love it. So sweet, sweet, sweet. Now, now that we're here, this is what's amazing. We have these two equations. What technique are we going to use again that we applied in the last problem? What did we say we could do? If L equals all this and L appears here and here. Adriana, you're ready to go. I love it. Yup, it is substitution again. Substitution. We're going to substitute. We're going to substitute the 3W for L. Because it is true right there. So with that said, let's go ahead and get to it. Let's get cracking. So I'm going to replace this equation with two, not L, but I'm going to replace it with three W. That's what I'm doing. And now that we have this, can we solve for W? Exactly. So let's go ahead and solve for W. Let's get this problem done. So two times three W, that's going to be six W plus two W equals 88. Six W plus two W, that gives us eight W. So that means W, once we divide both sides by the eight, that's going to give us 11. So W is 11. 11 what? What does 11 represent? W equals 11 what? What are the units here? What are the units? What are the units? Yes, centimeters. The, the width is 11 centimeters. 11 centimeters. Perfect. And so are we done? Is that the answer? Is it A? I love it. See, you guys are paying attention now. This is what I'm talking about. You understood your destination and you had the plan set up. You are not looking for width. You're looking for length. The width is only going to help us get there. I love you guys for that. Yep, this is what makes me want to get up in the morning, seriously. So we have the W. We're not done. Because again, we need L. So we understood earlier. 
we understood earlier that the length was equal to the three times the width. So if the length equals three times the width, we're going to plug it back in. Length equals three times 11. Length equals 33 centimeters. So our answer is C, not A. So who liked that explanation? Who's, who's in a better place now with this one? So do we see how, again, you know, trying your best, even if we get it wrong, I am here to take you to the next level. That's what I'm here for. So even if we got it incorrect and we still didn't quite get the whole thing, the plan is just to figure out what we can understand and then get a little more and a little more and a little more until it all makes sense. Think about it. Your first day teaching in the classroom is not your best day. Neither is your second day or third day. It takes time to get all of those little skills and patterns and things that you recognize to really feel comfortable and tackle every day like a professional teacher. This is the same thing in just a different way. We need to practice all of those little skills and bring ourselves up to the point where we know we can tackle any systems of equations problem. So I am simply showing you how to tackle any problem at all. So with that said, I love you guys for that. We got one more to go. Who's ready to tackle one more problem? Who is ready to tackle one more? Yeah, we're ready? All right, cool. So again, destination plan follow, that is the name of the game. Context, then content, and then compute. Y equals MX plus B. That's my favorite one-liner. That's how I use all the time in my first dates. LOL, I know I am sad. All right, cool. So here we go. Three, two, one, two minutes and 50 seconds. Here we go. Two minutes and 50 seconds. Sounds good, Jennifer. Thanks for joining. Everybody stick around for this last one. And then I got a little, a little gift for y'all right after. So here we go. Two minutes, 30 seconds. Starting the timer now. Remember when you're ready, type ready when you're ready. Well, that's right, Josephine, I got you. Hey, Josephine, would you actually mind um, going to click around? So what do you see right now? Just a, a face? Perfect. All right, so try it out, guys. Type ready when you're ready.
All right, gang, we're looking at 20 seconds here. Looks like a lot of us are done a little early, and that is okay. That's great, actually. But remember, we want to understand what we understand. All right, coming down to 10 seconds here, crunch time. Get ready to take your guess if you have to. Remember, on test day, you can take a guess. There's no penalty. Five, four, three, two, take your guess, go. All right, let's see what our answers are. We got some, a lot of C's, we got some A's, we got some C's. Got a lot more C's now coming in. All right, okay. We got more A's though, some C's again. All right, so what's actually the answer? What's actually the answer? Let's go ahead and check this thing out, guys. Let's check it out. So same thing as always, though. I don't care what problem we're doing. I don't care if it's area, perimeter, volume. I don't care if it's a word problem. I am always going through destination, plan, and follow. Because again, I hate anxiety. I don't want to freak out. So let's take it nice and slow. So destination. The cost for a breakfast taco and two small glasses of milk are this much money. If I were to buy two tacos and three glasses of milk, that's that much money. I wanna know how much money three tacos and five glasses of milk cost. So if I'm going through destination, I'm saying, well, we're talking about tacos and milk. I don't know why I'm drinking talk or drinking milk with tacos. I have no idea why I'm doing that, but that's the name of the game right now. So, okay. And what we're trying to figure out is the cost of three tacos and five glasses of milk. So, Right? <laughs> I thought the same. So when I'm looking at this, I'm saying, hey, look, we're talking about tacos and milk. I don't know why, but okay. And we're trying to figure out how many, how much money three tacos and five glasses of milk costs. So, so far, everybody, do we understand the premise of the problem? Do we understand the story behind the problem? Perfect. It's the majority of us. I like it. Man, we have huge participation here today. I love it. So yeah, boom. That's what we've got. So now let's go ahead and work on our plan. Let's talk about our plan. And I'm going to just use red circles and stuff to write out my plan. Remember, with your plan, you want to outline what you have and see how you can use that to get to what you need to know. So with that said, my plan is I'm going to outline my given information. So I'm actually going to move my plan over here. So what do I see that I should write down? Well, I see that the cost for a breakfast taco and two small glasses of milk is $3.05. So I'm gonna write that out. One taco plus two milks or two glasses of milk is, everybody remind me again, the word is, what does that translate to? The word is, what does the word is translate to? Yeah, the word is translates to equal. So one taco plus two milk equals $3.05. Now, moving forward with the plan, so this is sentence one. In the second sentence, cost for two tacos and three glasses of milk, $5.15. So two tacos plus three glasses of milk is $5.15. Now, everybody, taking a look at what we have right now, do we see how we can turn one taco, two milk, $3.05. Two tacos, three milks, $5.15.
how do we turn that into three tacos and five milk? How do we turn it into that? Exactly. We can add them both because guess what happens? Guess what happens? One taco plus two tacos, that's three tacos. Two glasses of milk, three glasses of milk, that's five glasses of milk. And so if we have $3.05 for one and $5.15 for the other, hey, if we add it all together, we should have the cost. So $3.05 plus $5.15, that's $8.20. Just like that. So with this problem, we actually didn't have to overthink it. With this one, we could have seen that, hey, look, if we used our sense of the structure there, the story, you know, the context, if we imagined ourselves there, we're saying, hey, look, I know one taco over there and two tacos over here. If I bring them together, that's the three tacos I want. Two glasses of milk and three glasses of milk, that's five glasses. So all of that money together should be what I'm looking for, logically speaking. And so I can actually go that route. Do I need to make a whole system of equations here? Do I need to use elimination or substitution? Do I need to spend all that time? No. And when we're looking at the answer choices, we have similar answers here. And so if you're familiar with Dr. Strategy, or Dr. A's strategies in terms of STO and looking at similar answers, B and C are pretty similar. So even if you were taking a guess, some of the best practices are to use similar answers. So with that said, with this question here, and with all the questions, have I shown you in one way or another that destination plan follow, this structure, helps us out. Give me a yes in all caps if this truly does help you out. And give me a you suck if it doesn't because I want to know how I can improve. <laughs> and I'm kidding. I don't want to hear you guys say I suck. Man, guys, I really appreciate that love though. I really do. Look, guys, it's all about destination plan follow, making sure you understand the context, then the content, and then following that plan to compute. So with that said, let's go ahead and recap this off one last time before I let you go. So just allow me just two more minutes here, and we got this. Yep, if you're stumped, choose between similar answers, exactly. So remember, destination plan follow is the name of the game. I'll allow you to take a picture of this one more time before we continue. And yeah, we absolutely do have more problems like this. I'm glad that you asked. Because the thing is, you know, throughout this coronavirus outbreak, we understand that the economy and things are not gonna be like they used to for just a little while. But we wanna make sure that you're prepared and you're doing everything you can to make sure that you're staying on track during this tough time. Because once we do bounce back, and we will, you guys are gonna be in the best position to continue on in your education, getting your certification, and getting things done. So with that said, Dr. A just posted a link that had a lot of spaces in between them, so let's go ahead and check that out again. But there are links to every single resource that we have that's related to the GK Math and Praxis Core Math, as well as links to other things for all of the other certification tests that you have. And we've done a favor for everybody. We're running all of these webinars for free. We've downsized everything by 50% on our website. That way, you can get everything you need so you can practice during the free time that we have. So with that said, again, schools are closed. We want you guys to take advantage of the time that we have, although there are troubles going around. So use the code, all caps, stay at home, just like the government's issuing warnings for on our learning liaisons website, on the channel websites, doesn't matter where you use it, everything is 50% off. Now, with that said, we do record these webinars. We will be giving access to these webinars in the coming days. Just check your emails and we will be sending those out. Uh, Deanne, so you have a good question. A lot of people are replying to that email. So you have to keep in mind that everything is happening really fast. 
So the fact that the state is working with Pearson to make the fees waive for the next 120 days, keep in mind one that testing centers are closed for the next 30 days. Who knows, it might be more. And there's gonna be thousands of teachers that are gonna to try to rush in and try to take the test and there's just not gonna be enough seats for everybody. So they didn't change anything on the website yet. I don't expect it to be overnight because they literally just announced this like yesterday, the day before. So it's gonna take some time for them to change our website and do what they need to do. So if I was you, I would just keep checking each day or in the morning and then once again in the evening. But you have the same question that everybody has because when you go there, there's a price there. So I don't know whether they're gonna post a code on the website because there's a, there's a code box when you register or they're just gonna change all the prices to zero for the next 120 days. But just keep in mind that all testing centers are closed everywhere in the country, even for the kids, they're not doing the SATs or the ACTs either. So you just have to keep an eye out on when they do those price changes. You just have to think of it from their side, it's gonna be a process for them to do that. That's a good question though. Sweet, yeah, so great question. But again, everybody, it's all about taking advantage of the time we have. The economy, the United States and the world will bounce back. So let's make sure that we're doing our part to make sure that we can get things going as seamlessly as possible once things are back to normal. So again, use the code stay at home to get 50% off all of our resources. That includes all of our courses, all of our resources in terms of our channels, our practice tests, everything. And do I have exercise available or do I get them? Box, the you want to mention the channel I put in the channel? Yeah, so if you, if you want to go ahead and re uh, copy and paste, just please eliminate the spaces between all of the I links. Did. Cool. Oh, okay, yeah, cool. So, yeah, we're going to go ahead and post the links again, guys. So, again, uh, if you're looking for more exercises, check the links that we're going to post again. We have boot camps for each of the practice core math and GK math. We also have uh, channels for the GK math and Praxis Core Math. Those links have just been posted. And what the channel is, for the GK and Praxis, there are hundreds of problems that I've made, just like the ones that I showed you, covering all of the topics. And I go over a video solution walkthrough for every single one. We did this because we understand that you guys want to practice on your time when you have it. And so this channel gives you 24 seven access to 400 plus problems and video solutions. That way you can watch me work every single problem out in the same way that I did today. That way you can take notes, excel, grow, and pass on your next attempt. So that's the GK math one. Does anybody want to see the Praxis links or if, any, if you need any other links, just let us know. We'll go ahead and post these here. The recording for this session will be up in a few days. Um, that way we can um, download the recording off of the cloud, edit it, and then post it, up, uh, post it out. So we'll be sending this out so you have access to it. But while this, you know, while this takes place, you know, we're, we're probably uh, you know, needing to take this time seriously. So remember, this goes all the way through April 1st. So take advantage, get your materials. I know it's a lot of things going on, but with the free time you have, you can keep yourself occupied and still make progress. Uh, Anthony, you won't be able to see the links in the recording, no. So go ahead, if you want to, just copy and paste them. You can access all those courses at www.thelearningliaisons.com. Remember that liaisons is two I's with the L. Um, but before we go, I want to make sure I answer any and all questions that you have. So I see that we have a Q&A box uh, question submitted, so let's check that out. So, uh, so Shatika, says, uh, do you have a channel for the Math 5.9 or is it just for the GK? So the, five, uh, the GK Math channel is uh, just for the GK, but the thing is about half of the topics on the 5.9 translate directly onto the GK, especially word problems and problem solving. So if you can't find any other resource for the 5.9, we do have a practice test for it. If you can't find anything else outside of that, I would recommend using the channel because it still helps you out. And if you would like me to sit down and outline each of those playlists that relate directly to the 5.9, I'm more than happy to. Just go ahead and shoot me an email. I'll type my email in the chat box right now so that everybody has access to me directly. So my email is anderson at thelearningliaisons.com. That's where you can email me, everybody. I am here to help you out. I know this is not an easy time for any of us, so we want to make sure we're doing everything we can. 
Dorothy, we have pre-K through three uh, materials and a boot camp on the learningliaisons.com. Uh, Helen, $19.99 for the channel. That's for the GK. It's actually going to be $10 once you apply the code. Stay at home in all caps. Yeah, not a problem, Helen. I got your back. So for those of us that are still here, oh, here we go. Another question, is the GK essay practice at 3 p.m. today on this same webinar? So there is a different link for that webinar, but it will. Right on. So there, there is a webinar button on our homepage on the learningliaisons.com. So uh, go ahead and check out that homepage and the links. You can sign up and get the link uh, to that session. Perfect. Yeah. And while, you know, while I'm still here, cause I'll stay, I'll be here for another couple of minutes. Um, what did you guys think of the session? Who's uh, whoever is still here? Did it help? You know, was there something that you feel like was just that stood out to you the most that you feel like you were doing wrong the whole time that you're glad that you came for? Or are you just grateful for the practice? <laughs> Ease so much of the panic. So clear. Hey, that's, that's awesome to see. Yeah, and being nervous is fine. You know, being nervous just means that you care. So Sammy, it's okay to be nervous. Now, it's not okay to not make any moves because of that nervousness. Yeah, no, it's okay to be wrong, Liz. It's completely okay. Because the thing is, being wrong is the best way to be right. Understanding how to do it the wrong way helps you understand when you're doing it wrong. 